Hey everybody, it's Joshua Fields Milburn from The Minimalists. Welcome back to another one of these, uh, well, we're calling them living room conversations, but as you can see, I'm, I'm not in my living room right now. I'm still at the office because today's been a long day. We've got a lot of exciting stuff, so we're at, uh, this is the podcast studio here. Let's go ahead and go in, and I've got a question to answer today. I feel like we have an appropriate question about meaningful work, and since I'm stuck here at the office, I'm not actually stuck. Uh, but we've had a long day. We recorded a new podcast episode about mementos for the Minimalist podcast. We're also working on some stuff. We're getting ready to announce this new tour, the Simply Southern Tour. We're going to be in uh, the South. We're going to be in uh, Birmingham, Alabama with special guest uh, Anthony O'Neill. We're going to be in Louisville, Kentucky with uh, Chris Hogan. And uh, Rachel Cruz is going to join us in Nashville. Those are in July. And so uh, the details to those are over at our website, theminimalists.com slash tour. Let me get this microphone out of the way since I'm not using it. Apologize if uh, I'm just using the microphone on my, my phone today. So if it's not as crisp as usual, that is why. But I've got a good question today. Uh, this question is about work. And since I'm here at the studio at our office, I thought it would be a perfect time to answer this question. Lee asks, can you still live a meaningful life if you can't turn your passion into a career? Well, I've got a, a little bit of a problem with that question, right? Because, well, it, it presupposes that you can't do something. And obviously there are many things that we, we can't do or many things that we actually shouldn't do as well, right? But why can't you is my question. I remember when I left the corporate world and people asked me where I was going. In fact, they often asked me, what competitor are you going to? And I told them that I was going to go write. I wanted to be a writer and predominantly write fiction. That was the, the my, my main plan at the time was to work in a coffee shop that was two blocks from my house and earn enough money to pay my rent and the few bills that I had after simplifying my life. But I wanted to write fiction full time. That was my thing. And then this whole minimalism thing happened. It was a beautiful accident. But that question here from Lee presupposes that you can't do something. And I, I will just challenge that question. If there's something that you want to do, maybe you can make a living from it if someone else is making a living from it. Because what they're doing is they're providing you with a, a template, basically, on how you can do it. Let's say you want to be a rodeo clown. Well, it's ridiculous to assume that you can't make a living as a rodeo clown because other people do it. When I left the corporate world and I was telling people, I want to become a writer, people thought I was crazy. You can't do that. If anyone could just quit their job and become a writer, then everyone would do it. Well, that seems silly to me. Not everyone wants to do that thing, first off. And second, I would, I'm not going to be the first person in all of history to become a writer. There are plenty of people who make a living from writing. Now, for me, I make a living as an author. It wasn't my initial intention. I originally wanted to write fiction, and then I, I realized that storytelling through these different mediums was a way for me to do it. So the first thing that I want to think about after challenging the question, why can't you do it, is how can you take that thing that is maybe your passion and cultivate it into something that is adjacent to your passion. Let's say I wanted to be a basketball player. Well, first off, I'm uh, only 6'2", which in, in the NBA is not going to get me very far unless I have a particular skill set. But also, I'm 36 years old, I'll be 37 this month, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit old to just try out for the NBA at this point. And, but that doesn't mean that I couldn't make a living that is basketball adjacent. Maybe I could be a writer for some sort of sports publication. Maybe I could be an assistant coach somewhere. I could be a physical therapist for an NBA team. There are a lot of things that are going to be basketball adjacent that are still going to allow me to be close to what I'm really passionate about. And so what is the template to get there then? Uh, if, if you're presupposing you can't do something, then you're probably right. You can't do it. But if you go into the, the situation presupposing that you can do something, well then, all you have to do is figure out what the recipe is. So the thing that I would recommend, the thing that I did once I realized like I want to be a writer full-time, that's what I want to do, I sat down with other people who were writers and figured out what their recipe was. Not hoping to completely replicate their recipe, but to find the right ingredients. An ingredient from this recipe, five ingredients from this recipe, oh, here's another ingredient. Learn from their successes, learn from their failures, and create my own recipe to turn that passion into well, what you call a career. The next problem I have with the question is, 
I wouldn't just call it a career. Maybe the question is, how can I earn money from this? But of course, we don't want to start with the money. I was reminded of this short, short blog post, uh, what I call essays, from Seth Godin. It's called The Order. It's tempting to decide to make profit first, then invest in training, people, facilities, promotion, customer service, and most of all, doing important work. In general, though, it goes the other way, right? And so if I were to sum that up and, and sum up what I have done with The Minimalist, what Ryan and I have done with The Minimalist, is help people solve problems. And eventually the money will follow. Ryan and I never started TheMinimalists.com in an attempt to make money. However, I'm certainly not allergic to money either. What I have done is help people solve a few problems, answer a few questions. I'm not an expert in anything, but I am well-rounded in a few things, and I understand a few things, and I'm able to convey that information, uh, and I've been able to do so over time so that people get value from it. And now when we go out on the road, people show up, or if we write a book, people decide to buy that. But first, we just started with a blog, and 99% of everything that we do is free, whether it's our podcast or these videos I'm putting up on YouTube or, or social media, the blog, all of these things for the most part are free. And then when we do decide to put something out that is a creation that we charge for, people often pay for it, or at least a small sliver of, of the audience that, that we have pays for that. And that helps me earn a living. But I don't think of it as a career, a career per se. In fact, I had a career before and that was kind of dangerous because it was just comfortable. It was comfortable enough for me to not do something that I was passionate about. And so the other thing that, that I, I would like to talk about real quick is we often hear this term, follow your passion. And I think it's bad advice. A friend of mine named Cal Newport wrote a book called uh, Deep Work and another book called So Good They Can't Ignore You. And the thing he often talks about is instead of trying to follow your passion, why not cultivate a passion? Because the truth is, you don't have to have one thing that you're passionate about. You can be passionate about dozens of things. And so I printed out this article from my friend TK Coleman. He was just on the Minimalist Podcast, episode 131. We talked about school. And he's a talented writer online. I'll, I'll put a link to this below in, in the show description on, on YouTube. And uh, he says, you don't need to make a career out of everything you love. And I'm going to read this real quick, and then we'll have a, a bit of a conversation here. Your personal happiness is not a career, nor is your career the end-all, be-all to your personal happiness. Yes, I know that happiness is your job and that you're the CEO of your own fulfillment. I've read a copy of Happiness is an Inside Job too, but I'm not playing semantic games here. I mean business. No one is going to pay you for your positive emotions, and nothing you ever get paid for will be responsible for every positive emotion you feel. Your happiness and your job will always be separate things, even if you have the happiest job in the world. Why? Because there will always be exciting, beautiful, and inspiring possibilities to explore that are not directly connected to the work you receive paychecks for. I think that's also important to realize. You weren't born to be one thing. You weren't born to be a yoga instructor or an astronaut or a physicist or a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher, but you could potentially be any of those things. But you also don't have to be passionate about just one thing either. You can cultivate many passions and you can do that today or you can cultivate many passions over time, right? When I, when I think about the things that I was passionate about when I was a teenager, it's obviously different from what I'm passionate about now. And so your passions also will change over time. Uh, going back to what TK wrote here, I don't get paid to drink water, but I do it anyway because... It keeps me alive. Ditto for eating food, sleeping at night, taking walks, watching stand-up comedy, checking sports scores, reading graphic novels, studying philosophy, taking hikes, visiting botanical gardens, and a host of other activities that are essential to keeping my body, mind, spirit, and relationships alive. No one wants to give me money for these things, but I absolutely have to do them. And guess what? I love my job. So, Here's the thing, no one wants to give TK money for those things, but you could actually cultivate any of those things into a passion, and if you help people solve problems, if you add value to other people's lives, money can come from those things. So maybe him going to stand-up comedy, I actually went to a stand-up comedy show with TK a few weeks ago at the comedy store, and 
people aren't going to give him money to go to a comedy show, but if he decided to cultivate that passion of stand-up comedy into a stand-up comedy career, uh, then, of course, eventually he could make an, a living from that because plenty of people do make a living from stand-up comedy after many, many years of cultivating that passion. Many years in, in that case. So it doesn't come right away. It's developing the skills over many years. Uh, TK says, I wake up every day and I get to do professional work that I deeply believe in. And the following still remains true. The sum total of all my coworkers, customers, company mission, compensation, and creative activities related to my job will never be big enough to capture and satisfy the full range of my diverse interests. Expecting my job to do that would be as unfair and unrealistic as expecting my spouse to exclusively and exhaustively fulfill my needs for community, conversation, and camaraderie. Life doesn't work that way. You can't force a single relationship to be your everything, and you can't force everything you love to fit into a single relationship. And so it gets back to Lee's question here. You can't force one thing to be the thing, right? And uh, But that doesn't mean you can't do meaningful work as well. Getting back to what TK wrote here. I don't know where it originated, but there seems to be this popular misconception that you're wasting your time if you're mastering skills, tackling challenges, developing expertise, building your network, and playing around with ideas related to a passion or pastime that you don't get paid for. Similarly, there's a common fear that if you're getting paid for something that leaves out other important interests, for example, you get paid to be a programmer, but you also love to dance, then you're missing out on an authentic human experience. We're hesitant to pursue our passions if we aren't sure we'll get paid for it. We're hesitant to get paid for something if we aren't sure we'll feel passionate about it. We've, brought, we've bought into the lie that there are only three possible roads in life. Number one, find a job that completely eliminates the distinction between work and play. Number two, sell your soul for a job that doesn't satisfy your passions. Or number three, refuse to commit to anything that threatens to interfere with playtime. Here's a fourth possibility. Realize that being a human being means you're bigger than all the jobs and all the passions you'll ever have. And no matter what you commit to or refuse to commit to, no matter where you work or refuse to work, no matter what hobbies you make time for or fail to make time for, there will always be more to who you are, more to what you want, and more to why you're here than anything you choose or re refuse to do at any given moment or stage. I think it's important. Instead of looking at your job to meet all your needs, give yourself permission to simply enjoy and explore things outside the context of your professional life. And instead of requiring all your hobbies to be profitable, let go of the need to justify everything you do in terms of dollars and cents. The people who tell you to, quote, do what you love have always been right. After all, what's the alternative? Refusing to do what you love. Where you'll go wrong, however, is if you make the mistake of equating do what you love with if you don't find a way to get paid for every single thing you love, then you're wasting your time. Yeah, keep it simple. Get paid, uh, keep it simple. Get paid wherever and whenever you can. And even if you can't, enjoy life wherever and whenever you can. You don't need to make a career out of all the things you love, but you do not make a life out of all the things you love. And if you're doing it right, your life will always be bigger and better than your career. So if I were just to, to sum that up here, Lee, I think you can look at what you're passionate about and you can find a way that what you're passionate about will solve other people's problems. And if you do that and you start solving one person's problem and then two people's problems and getting that message out into the world, eventually over time, 
You'll become an expert on a topic. You'll develop the skill set. You'll take the talent you have, develop into a skill set to where you're solving so many problems. You're adding so much value to other people's lives. It turns into a business or a career or a way to make money. But certainly, that doesn't happen overnight. All right, y'all, if you have more questions for these living room conversations, you can ask it below in the comments. If you wanna hear more of these answers, you can subscribe, and I will see you next time.